quickly, the text says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 58, says, Be ye steadfast, therefore be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your, na la your labor is not in vain. And for the few minutes that is mine, if you're not too mean, and if you can stand it that long, look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I'm staying faithful in tough times. Look at the neighbor on the other side. Say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I'm staying faithful in tough times. Beloved, can I be real with you? To, this morning when I turned on television, I was kind of confused, upset, distorted, and depressed when I learned that 53 people had been murdered and another 50 had been injured because someone thought it would be a good idea to take a weapon and go into a nightclub and kill everybody there. You know, we found out later on that it was a byproduct of ISIS who wanted to destroy the people of God and wanted to destroy what was going on in America. They wanted to move Americans' faith, shake us from believing that this is a free society predicated on the Constitution. They wanted us to believe that we are wrong and they are right. And so the other only way that they could do that was to convince us that killing was the best option. And I come today to tell you that there are people out there, terrorists in all of our lives, who are trying to convince us that serving the Lord is a bad thing. I mean, you are ushers every Sunday. You come in Sunday in and Sunday out, and you have to deal with terrorists. I mean, I ain't talking about folk who come with oozes and machetes. I'm talking about folk who live in your house or who go to your church Sunday after Sunday, who have already attempted and planned to make you fail. I mean, yeah, they smile at you. They think they're the dogs bow wow and they catch me out. But the truth of the matter is that they got you on a hit list. I mean, they've been observing your wife, your kids, your children, and they're trying to find every way that they can to make you fall. Can I get a witness out there that there's somebody who understands that you could be sleeping with the enemy and not even know it? I mean, we got some homegrown terrorists, right, on a usher board who come in Sunday after Sunday with their badges on, but yet and still they're trying to to find a way to put power and position, grab over some type of authority over you. But I come today that Paul lets us know that you can be faithful in some tough times. You can be faithful when all hell is breaking loose. You can be faithful when it seems like you have more month than you do money. Is there anybody here who don't mind raising your hand and saying that I've learned how to be faithful in the good times and the bad times? Look at Paul. He tells us how to be faithful. He's dealing with this Corinthian church. And if you know anything about the Corinthian church, it was a church that was divided because of the, everybody thought there was somebody. Everybody was putting the lawsuits against each other. There were people sleeping around with each other. They were serving the goddess Diana. And if you know anything about the, the goddess Diana, she was the goddess of sex and love. And so they were trying to bring the world into the church and make now the church the world and, and, and the world the church. Y'all praying with me this morning? There are always some folk who are trying to make the church what it is not. And here Paul talks to these Christians. He founded this church in Acts chapter 18. You read about this Corinthian church. Here he is talking to these Christians. And if you look at the previous chapters, he was talking to them, telling them, number one, about the resurrection. After he talks about the resurrection, and after he talks about the grave, he concluded his sermon with these words. Therefore, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Yeah, if you are going to have faith in tough times, the first thing you ought to be is, number one, you got to be steadfast. Look at your neighbor and say, be steadfast. When you talk about being steadfast, that means you got to learn how to be at a place in your life that no matter what goes on, you're going to keep a steady course. You're going to be firm. You're not going to waver from the left or the right. If nobody else stands at the door to hush you, you're going to be there with your badge on. If nobody else say amen and support the pastor, you're going to be there supporting the pastor and your church. You're going to be steadfast and you're going to be able to be firm and steady. Your yes is going to be a 
yes and your no is going to be a no. The text says be ye steadfast, but not only be ye steadfast, unmovable. That means that you're not going to let life shake you from your position and your call because you recognize that you've been called for such a time as this with a purpose. Is there anybody in here who don't mind saying I've got a purpose in my life? I mean, there's some folk who don't know what their purpose is. Yeah, some folk are serving on the usher board who should be singing in the choir. There's some folk who are serving on the usher board who should be a trustee. But when you know your purpose and you know who has called you, you might not have all the qualifications, but you know that you're going to be steadfast, unmovable. But here's the point I like. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. No, I ain't going to be a busy body. I ain't going to be in your bedroom trying to determine what you're doing. You got to sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. You got to know what your business is. Stop trying to be in everybody else's business and mind your business. Slap your neighbor high five and shout out it's time to mind your business. Yeah, Paul lets us know in this place right now that I'm going to be steadfast, uh, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because the last thing I want you to know is because your labor is not going to be in vain. Look at your neighbor and say, serving the Lord is going to pay off after a while. Uh, I don't know when it's going to pay off for you. Uh, I might not get one penny right now. Uh, I might not get a certificate right now, uh, but I know one thing that one of these mornings uh, when he comes back uh, the dead in Christ gonna rise uh, there's a payday that's coming after a while uh, look at your neighbor and say neighbor neighbor there's a payday coming uh, I might not have my way in your hand uh, and say I'm blessed uh, I'm blessed uh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. I'm going to stay faithful. I'm going to stay faithful. When times are bad, I'm going to stay faithful. When I feel like giving up, I'm going to stay faithful. When my friends leave me, I'm going to stay faithful. In the morning time, I'm going to stay faithful. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Stay faithful in tough times. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you.